Hi, I'm Rick the Pilot Teacher and if you've got an interest in helicopters or are thinking of becoming a helicopter pilot, there are so many acronyms, terms and names for things associated with the helicopter. And in this video, we're going to go through the 101 of helicopters. So what makes a helicopter a helicopter is its main rotor system. This is found on top of the helicopter and it comprises of several parts. Those parts being the main rotor blade. Some helicopters have two, some have three, some have four, some have five, and I think you go all the way up to eight for the MI-26. Next you have the swash plate. The swash plate is what gives the helicopter its magic. The swash plate transfers controls from the pilot to the rotor blades to allow the helicopter to maneuver in the air. From the swash plate connecting up to the blades are the pitch links. And these basically just transfer the motions from the swash plate into the actual blades themselves. Driving the main rotor system is the mast. And that basically comes out of the top of the main transmission and connects to the main rotor head. On each blade you'll find what are called trim tabs and trim tabs are used by the maintenance engineers when they're doing a track and balance to get the aircraft flying nice and smooth and they can be adjusted with a special tool. So the parts of a blade you have the blade root which connects to the uh, main rotor hub. You have the blade tip which is the very end of the blade. That's the ends that you use to tie the blades down if you're securing the aircraft. On the front of the blade you have the leading edge and at the back of the blade you have the trailing edge. So another part of the helicopter is the tail rotor. This basically instead of creating vertical lift it creates horizontal thrust and the tail rotor is there basically to stop the helicopter spinning round from the torque being produced by the engine transmission and main rotor system. The tail rotor is mounted on the end of what is called the tail boom and is a structural component of the aircraft. Next you have horizontal stabilizers. Next you have a vertical stabilizer that helps to keep the aircraft traveling straight through the air. It also helps in a tail rotor failure to try and keep the aircraft pointing forward as you make an emergency landing. On the bottom of the vertical stabilizer is what is called the stinger. This is there to protect the tail rotor if the aircraft comes in and does a hard flare close to the ground and the tail comes close to the ground the stinger will hit the ground before the tail rotor hopefully from preventing the tail rotor from contacting the ground and then causing a tail rotor failure. So there's three kinds of tail rotor systems. You've got the conventional tail rotor which is made up of two, three, four blades like this or you have what's called a Fenestron, which is basically trademarked to Airbus, which is a series of blades within a shroud, uh, provides for a much quieter ride. And then you have the Notar, which is by MD Helicopters, which uses the Coanda effect and a big fan at the end to create the anti-torque to stop the aircraft from spinning around. On top of the vertical stabilizer, you've usually got the strobe or anti-collision light. This is a either red or a very bright flashing light that is used to help identify the aircraft when flying at night uh, or flying in low visibility conditions. Next you have cowls. Cowls cover the parts of the aircraft and they usually have doors called cowl doors that you can open to gain access for visual inspections, maintenance, that kind of thing. So coming down to the bottom side of the aircraft, helicopters have either skids, which are the fixed landing gear like you see here, or they can have wheels. With skid type aircraft, that especially that get used out in the bush and swamps and things like that, you have things called bear paws. Bear paws get fitted to the back of the aircraft to help the back from um, sinking into the soft ground. Most utility helicopters will have a cargo hook on the bottom. This allows the uh, pilot to lift items using a short line or a long line and the hook is controlled by the pilot so that he can press a button and release the load as and when they need. Also you'll find on many utility machines is a utility basket 
Uh, it can be mounted on either the left or the right hand side of the helicopter and it basically allows for storage and transportation of longer items like skis or poles, also things that you don't want going inside the aircraft like jerry cans of gas. Located all over the aircraft we have antennas. These can be for the radios, the navigation systems, the GPS or the emergency locator transmitter. On the front of helicopters you have what are known as chimbable windows. These are basically windows by the pilot's feet and the passenger's feet and it allows the pilot to look down as they're coming in so that they can see the area in which they are going to be landing into. On many helicopters you will find a cable cutter kit. It's basically two cutters are mounted above and below the front window so if the aircraft was accidentally flown into wires the wire will come up the windscreen and hopefully get cut by the cable cutter before it goes through the main rotor system causing a uh, fatal collision. On many utility helicopters you will find mirrors mounted on the pilot side and sometimes the passenger side. The mirrors allow the pilot to look at the cargo hook and also look at the load depending on how they have their mirrors adjusted. I also use them a lot to look at my bear paws when I'm landing in uneven ground so I can make sure that the aircraft is going to be landing in a nice flat area not on any rocks or things like that. Coming up we have the pito tube. This is a basically a tube that air flows into as you are flying through the air and it feeds air into the airspeed indicator to tell the pilot how fast it is going. Most pedo tubes are heated to prevent them getting uh, frosted up or iced up and then giving the pilot an erroneous reading. On some helicopters we have what is known as a trim string and the trim string is just a quick visual indication to the pilot to allow them to see that they are flying the aircraft in trim. So in the front seats of any helicopter you will find the flight controls. There's always one set of flight controls depending on which side of the aircraft the um, pilot is designed to sit. It can be the right or the left, it's usually the right. And you can also have what is known as dual controls where you have flight controls at both front seats. Those flight controls are made up of the cyclic which is held by the right hand of the pilot and this control maneuvers the helicopter over the ground in a forwards backwards kind of bank left and bank right configuration. The collective that is held by the pilot's left hand and by raising and lowering the collective it increases power and pitch to the main rotor system and allows the aircraft to climb or descend. Down at the pilot's feet is the pedals. The pedals change the pitch of the tail rotor and allow the aircraft to rotate round to the left or rotate round to the right. In most aircraft you will find a transponder. A transponder allows other aircraft with um, equipped avionics and air traffic control to see where the aircraft is on their radar screen. Air traffic control can issue the pilot what is known as a squawk code and a squawk code is a four digit code which the pilot puts into the transponder and then it allows for easier identification on the radar screen in front of the air traffic controller. So helicopters are kind of made up of what we call steam gauges or a glass cockpit. Steam gauges are like what you see here which is individual gauges. They're not powered by steam but it's kind of older technology and it gets nicknamed as steam gauges and then the modern helicopters have what is known as a glass cockpit and it can be basically all kind of LCD screens or it can be a mixture of LCD screens and steam gauges. In helicopters you'll find circuit breakers and fuses all over the place. The circuit breakers and fuses are basically there to protect the avionics and electrical equipment from um, power surges, short circuits, things like that. So if there's a problem in the electrical system, the circuit breaker or the fuse will blow first before it breaks the equipment. In a helicopter you'll find a Hobbs meter. A Hobbs meter is basically um, a counter that starts counting the second the aircraft leaves the ground and stops counting the second the aircraft touches the ground. Uh, it's used to monitor how long the aircraft flies and is activated by what is known as a squat switch or a weight on wheels switch and it's basically just a, um, a switch that's connected to the landing gear of the aircraft and once the aircraft lifts up the uh, pressure being placed on the landing gear is less and it activates the switch and starts the Hobbs meter running. 